So clearly we've created something profound, amazing, certainly something we haven't seen the likes of before. And this is just the beginning. We're just scratching the surface. We're eight months into this app store. Imagine where it's going to be in the coming months or, or a year from now. And to help give us a glimpse of that future, I'd like to bring Scott Forstall up to give us a preview of iPhone OS 3.0. All right, I'm here to tell you about iPhone OS 3.0. Now, this is a major update to the iPhone operating system. And that's the operating system that runs on all iPhones and iPod Touches. It comes with incredible features for developers and for our customers. Let me start by telling you what we're doing for developers. A year ago, we announced the native iPhone SDK. And with it, we enabled developers to use the same native APIs and tools that we use internally to build all of the applications that ship as part of the iPhone. Now, our goal here was to make developers successful. We gave them the best tools and APIs and frameworks ever for building applications. And what they did with this blew us away. As Josh showed, to the tune of over 25,000 apps in eight months. It's incredible. So we've spent the last year working hard to make this SDK even better. And I'm happy to say that with iPhone 3.0 comes the next generation of this native SDK. And with it come more than 1,000 new APIs. This is a lot of functionality to make these apps even easier to develop and allow developers to add even more functionality. Let me talk you through just a little bit of the functionality from this new SDK, starting with enhancements we're making to the App Store. Now, the App Store has been phenomenal. As you heard, over 800 million applications have been downloaded. This is amazing. It is the best way ever for developers to get their applications out to our collective tens of millions of users. It's also a great business deal. Developers can give their apps away for free, or if they choose, they can sell them. If they sell them, the developer picks the price. 70% of the revenue from that price goes straight to the developer. There are no credit card fees. In fact, there are no hosting fees or other infrastructure fees. Apple covers all of that. And developers are paid monthly. So it is a great business deal. But we've been listening. And some developers have come to us saying there are other business models they'd love to support for their applications. For instance, subscriptions. Right? There are publishers out there of things like magazines that would love to have a magazine application right on the store where you can renew that subscription inside the application. There are game developers who would love to add additional levels and be able to sell game levels right from within the game. And there's a lot of other new content that developers like to sell inside an application. For instance, an ebook. Today, you have to sell one application per book. But there are ebook developers who would love to sell a generic ebook application and have a bookstore built into the app. Well, I'm happy to say that we are supporting all of these additional purchase models in iPhone 3.0. And we're doing it with what we call in-app purchase. Let me show you how it works. Let's say you have an e-magazine. In iPhone 3.0, right from within this application, you'll be able to purchase the renewal. So you get this standard panel, it comes up and says, in this case, would you like to purchase six more months? for $4.99. When you tap buy, you'll continue to receive all of the issues to this magazine right inside the app. Next, a game. You can now purchase a game that would come with, say, 10 levels. And when you're done playing those 10 levels, just by the tap of your finger, you could purchase the next 10 levels for the game. When you say you'd like to buy it, the game will automatically download those levels 
right into the game. One more example, city guides. Again, before iPhone 3.0, you would need to sell one application per guide. With iPhone 3.0, you can sell a generic city guide application and then sell city packs. So you can see here, I've already purchased, say, the Boston and the New York City pack. But let's say I want to purchase Chicago. That's as easy as tapping on Chicago. And it brings up this standard alert asking me if I'd like to purchase it. Now here's where it's really nice. This whole thing is tied directly into the iTunes store. So when you tap on buy, it brings up a standard iTunes credential panel. In a secure way, you now get your username, you type in your password, and when you do, it talks back to our iTunes store, validates the account, and when it approves the purchase, the application is free to download that city guide right into the app. And now, you're good to go. So, in-app purchase. The business model for in-app purchase is the same as for the app store, meaning the developer sets the price for in-app purchase items. Again, 70% of the revenue goes straight to the developer. There are no credit card fees. We will cover all the credit card fees. And developers are paid monthly. Now, to keep the model simple for the consumer, this is for paid apps only. So if a developer sells an application, and it makes sense in that application to have an in-app purchase, say for a subscription, you're absolutely happy to go ahead and do that. But to keep it simple, when a consumer sees a free application, free apps remain free. You won't be asked ever to buy something inside that free application. And that's what we're doing for in-app purchase. Next, 